enlighten thou our heads, that good may become what we from our hearts would found, what we from our heads would direct in conscious willing. Thank you, Leanne. I think we can begin. Do we want to so record? Know. Or are we yes, recording? It's recording. It's okay. recording. Yes, yes. So we started at the Felsley, which is this beautiful outdoor theater right in front of the west entrance of the Goetheanum, which is this, this uh, entrance that we are about to go through. It's the main entrance. And we just wanted to do it from here so that you get the sense that the Goetheanum, for those of you that haven't visited before, is not just one building, but it's an entire campus of the, of the School of Spiritual Science. And as you can see, it's a beautiful surrounding that kind of merges with the natural situation of Dorna. Steiner did not only design the, the building, but actually, or the building, but also the landscape. So if Daniel were here, I'm not sure he is, as a biodynamic farmer, gardener, and lover of sacred spaces, <laughs> this is pretty much it, it as, as sacred as it gets. And Nicholas has gone inside to charge the second phone so that we can swap around because only in the past 10 minutes since we've been talking about 40% uh, of the battery is gone because Zoom is quite heavy. Um, so just want to kind of say to you all that if at any point the image goes down or you can no longer see us, don't panic, we will be back and use the time to kind of think of this place and talk to one another. And I'm really looking forward to arriving at the West Entrance where Nicholas is waiting for us and actually proper, properly welcome you to my dear workplace, our dear Tatiano, because it's actually ours, belongs to all of us. Maybe I can just take a minute to show you the immensity of it. This path, which is the uh, one of the entryways into the building, also coincides with <clears throat> the archive uh, house, House Uldek, uh, which was originally actually built for a dentist. So maybe some of you see the resemblance with teeth or a tooth. Some people say that <laughs> that there is something in there, but this is currently the archive of the of the. Uh, Goetheanum, and it means that Steiner's actual uh, library is at the yeah. at the bottom floor. It's quite nice to to go and visit if you ever come. You can see all the scribbles that Steiner made. You know the different books. Okay, shall we go in? Sure. Okay. So someone comes. Oh, we need mask actually. Hello. Out and we go in. I'm just going to imagine that you were all here with us. <laughs> so here is the entrance at the moment. You can see all the COVID signs, but I don't want to go through the reception. No, no, no. Yeah, the reception is there. So if you would come, you would actually come through there to register for an event. But the entrance is here. This is the first level. And you see Nicholas, if you you will take the right yeah. and I take the left. Can you hear Nicholas when he speaks? 
No, no. He's saying that um, these were at the bottom of the of the stairs of the original first Gethianum. Right at the entrance. The west right at the entrance of the west entrance. So. So they are standing where they would stand in the first Gethianum. They were the the beginning of the rail, the stair, the staircase rail. Okay. Right. You go through this. Yeah. And so we are on the west entrance. And when we go up, we begin to see the amazing organic architecture that you can see inside. At the moment, there is a, a project with Faust. Yes, everything is concrete. Concrete. Um, everything is made of concrete and there are wood elements. Just want to show you here, this is very important because at the moment we have a Faust performance going on in, in summer, and this is all the faces of the people that are involved, not only as actors, but also backstage producers. And we arrive at the first floor. And if you remember, you may have seen that window from the front earlier on. So now we're inside looking out to the west, a very special place to, to see the sunset. And here, mirrored in the, the window on the first floor, you have a corridor that leads you all the way to the offices of the people that, some of the people that work here. And it's wonderful now because we have a beautiful exhibition of Elizabeth Wagner. She was the wife of a quite well-known anthroposophical painter. You may know about him. They are beautiful, beautiful images that bring so much warmth in these strange times where not so much, not so many people have been visiting the Gethianum because of the COVID situation, but exhibitions at the moment where you can still those who can actually come in and visit can have a sense of not only the, the building and the and the campus but also the 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 artistic movements and the and the happenings that are embraced by the anthroposophical society and the Gukeanu. So you get a sense of a bit the space on the first floor. Andrew, can you say something about the architecture, the lack of sharp corners, you know, that is in the Gurdianum that's classic of how all the, the blunted edges. Exactly. So Leanne, Leanne talks about the angles and the the main feature or sorry i'm just figuring out something with the headphones just a second the main feature of organic architecture is that it doesn't um there are no straight right angles how do you say it in english right angles right angles so and everything the main, but the main feature would, would be more that it connects to the landscape to the landscape in which uh, it's being uh, applied yeah Exactly. So you have to go here. To yeah, yeah. yeah. Andrew, we can't Sorry, hear Leanne. Nicholas when he speaks. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what I'm gonna tell him that he that he has to tell me what he wants to say. Nico, they cannot hear you, so you have to yeah, okay. So 
um, yeah, he was saying that actually the main feature of, of organic architecture is that it's actually inspired or that it, it becomes formed out of the landscape um, that surrounds it. So actually when Steiner was planning this building, the architecture of it, and if you, a while ago, we actually had a great exhibition here um, that showed, oh, just a second. You can see there the reflection of the red window shining on the concrete or on the, yeah. On the wall. Um, so everything, everything that the, the shapes actually come from images from the from the mountain, and the and the rolling hills around it. You could actually see pictures of the landscape of Dorna and then the Gutianum, and you can see parts of the building reflected in the in the landscape or the other way around. Um, but also there is an element of, I think, I don't know if it was with you guys once we talked about the Gutianum being a bit like a, se a sense organ. So um, you can see this kind of quality of like an inward body in these shapes inside, like maybe cartilage or, or bones, as if you were inside the tiny little bits of our ears. You see? And actually this, this part would be a bit like the top of the, of the head. If we imagine that the west entrance that we entered through is the face, so the, the front of, of our head, kind of looking west, looking at the sun setting. Then we are right now at the forehead, I suppose. And at the forehead, you can see this amazing image. I hope, I hope that you can see it well, which is the red window. And of course, <laughs> there is so much that can be said about this image. Um, but maybe just to, to give you a, a picture of it, there are three panels, as you can see. The Nico, maybe you want to say because you, you can probably relate more. But so I give you the headphones. But um, there are three panels. How much battery is this? Not much. Ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll talk online. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you now. Right. Well, to be perfectly honest, it's not like there's much to say, except that, first of all, these are not intended to be um, thought of as symbols, but they are ra rather like characterizations of uh, soul experiences, so to speak. And, uh, and actually, it's, it's kind of, there's a way of reading it somehow. Um, one starts on this side, on the top. I don't know if you actually can see it. In, can, can, can you manage to see it well? Anybody? It's not coming through especially clearly. It's not, is it? Okay. No. Okay, that's it's a pity. Red with some morphic shapes. Yeah, of course, we're just not going to be able to get the details here. Right. So yes, it well, if you ever have, if you have ever seen a, the uh, a picture of this glass windows, you will you will see that on the top there, there's a man looking inward into an abyss. And then there's these pictures, rather frightening pictures on the bottom. And then it's meant to be read in this way, going up. And then in the center is uh, the final image. So uh, yeah, I hope you can, you can get to see, you can, you can get a picture somewhere. I'm sure there's plenty of them on the internet, right? The right, there's a book called uh, The Gachanum Windows. I don't know if you know it. 
Um, there you have all the information about the different mm -hmm. um, Right, so we are on the second floor of the west. And this is the entry, this is the door for the closer side, to the main hall of the Gretchen. So this is where all the big events take place. So Andrea will open the doors for us. To turn on the lights, but after the yeah, the window. So now we're looking east, obviously. Um, and we have the stained glass windows on both sides on the south and on the north. And there is the first one from the top is the green. Oh, I hope I, I don't know if you can get to see the picture. Mm -hmm. Not really. So the, the, the atmosphere that you can check is even even in person, it's difficult to it's, realize what the different features. So yeah, it's yeah. more so that they get a sense of the light on the screen. Yeah, I'm gonna get the the font. Yes, I was the same to Nicholas to tell you that that is very, very difficult, even when you're here to get all the details of the, the images that are on the window. So I think that, you, you know, even if even if you, if you made a video about it would be um, would not be precise enough. So aha, thank you very much. Someone is showing, I don't know who you are because I can see it, but I want to show in the, the exact images. Wait, can you? Yeah, exactly. I'm You're from the first Gatianum, okay? Yeah, from the first Gatianum, because in the first Gatianum, actually, you see there in the in the image that is being shown, is it you, Nadima? Yes. So they were they were three in three parts, so so uh, like a triptych. And here the three have been breaking down into three vertically. So you have at the top, what we would be in the middle, and um, at the bottom, the two that would be on either side if it was still a triptych. Exactly. One thing to have in mind. Uh, can you go get the phone? Yes, I can go, but I want to check. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me there? No. No, they cannot hear me. So I can repeat okay. you. Right. There's two levels of uh, representations or, or characterizations of the evolution of evolution. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll show it just a bit. Um, one thing to have in mind that it can be helpful when we're looking to this place is that um, there are three, uh, so it is a kind of characterization of evolution at three different levels. So we have the most macro levels, is, can, can be found on the um, ceiling. Not on the ceiling, no, on the column. On the column. And on each column at the bottom, I actually don't know the terms in, in English, I'm sorry, what you call the bottom and the, the top of the, the columns. You can't see it well now because we uh, purposely left, left the lights out. So we will see them in a, in a couple of minutes. And there's for each column, there's one stage of cosmic evolution. So different incarnations of the Earth, Saturn, Sun, Old Saturn, Old Sun, Old Moon, etc up to the present time in the future. The ceiling represents uh, the evolution of the Earth. And there's all these different um, stages of the evolution of the Earth represented in the ceiling. But again, we can't see very well. But we will turn so it the columns out. represent uh, the evolution of cosmic evolution, the ceiling, the evolution of the Earth, and the glass windows, one could say, um, Individual. Of the eyes of the individual. So we have all these three streams of evolution um, represented here in the Great Hall. Tell them that originally the 
Yeah, okay. Exactly. And then originally, in the first Getty Anum, it was planned that when you would come into the, the Great Hall and you would look into the state, which, as Nicholas says, faces east, at the end of it, you would have the representative of humanity, which we will see later, uh, standing right at the back. So you, it would be watching you or you would be watching it as you uh, engaged in the, in the performance or, or, or the talk or lecture that would be given at the, on the stage. And Nicholas is just going to get another phone for us. So there will be a moment of disconnection. Um, but I want to come down to show you everything from the other side. And I would take time also later to go through each of the windows because I've really only shown the green one. But from here, you see what one would see if they were sitting down on the proscenium arch on the stage and over there is the organ of the Getianum, it's an amazing instrument. I don't know if you can hear me well, uh, but if you can, um, the, the theater has capacity for a thousand people. Um, so a thousand people, up to a thousand people can sit here. And from here you can see You're breaking up, Andrea. Yes, exactly. If if it's happening, if it's breaking up, it's because here we are very, very deep. It's just the audio that's breaking up. We can still see. Andrea, if you are trying to talk, which you may want to try, you're on mute right now. No, no, I'm not trying. I'm purposely just leaving the sound okay. out. I just, I hope you get a sense of the quality of the light more, more than the images. Can you take them to the other side of the, mm -hmm. what I did again? On this blue ceiling, um, stained glass window, we have the, the zodiac on the top.
I'll go turn on the lights. Yes? Yes. Uh, you have to turn the film light. No, up there. No. And this is the last thing that window. Mm. I can't try to turn on the lights and it's very bright outside so I don't know how yeah okay so I don't know if you can hear me now Andrea said that the connection is not so great. We can hear you. Yeah. So here you can see perhaps what I mean. Um, the columns start all the way up uh, back there and it goes through a process, this evolu evolutionary process it goes in this direction down. I mean, the quality of the picture is not so good. Let me. Let me get closer. <clears throat> right. So it goes all the way to this last one here. And the ceiling, it's tricky to film actually, because it's not even easy to look at when one is standing here, let alone filming it. Uh, but let me see what I can do. I'll just go up here. So we see quite a few of the post-Atlantean cultural epochs represented in the ceiling, actually. Um, this will be the Indian culture with the seven holy rishis there. Mm -hmm. This is the old Persian culture. I don't know how well you can see it really. Um, Nicholas, can you say something about the shapes? Um, right as the columns, you know, just below the um, images in the ceiling. We just changed the phone. So I think now you will be able to hear us both. The question of Leanne was, um, can you say something about the columns, the shapes of the columns? Hmm, I don't think I could. I'm, um, I don't know any details about there are, it. There are, there are different there are... interpretations. But not, not too. So the I mean, metamorphosis I of the plant. The metamorphosis, yeah, th there's a representation of metamorphosis. So you can definitely see a process of, of uh, differentiation and, and uh, 
and development of complexity. Um, and yeah, and it, I, I don't know what, I mean, I would like to be able to tell you what book to look at because I'm sure that there is, do you know any? You should ask Torvald. About what? About the, the, well, this the is sculptures. The, the, well, Okay, so H. Thing, it depends who gives you the thing, actually, by um, Hasler. Stefan Hasler. Uh, I don't think Stefan he... Hasler, his father. Um, oh, Hans Hasler. Yes, Hans sorry. Hasler on the Goetheanum. And, he, I, and, and we really recommend this, this as a starting point because... Well, but there's I mean, not much information about the, the, about the columns as such. What you can see, though, look, this is the Earth. This one here. This is one, two, three, the fourth. Um, I don't think I could tell you more about the actual shapes here. I mean, here is basically a um, an hexagon. What do you call it? Is that is that a word in English? I don't even know if that's English. Hexagon. Hexagon. Hexagon is six. Exactly. Here there is a, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah, here it's something like coming in from the top. This will be old, old sun and that this will be old Saturn for those of you who have read um, occult science. And here we would have uh, old moon and here the earth. And you can see on the top there, it's kind of two columns and this kind of uh, wavy, shape around them. I don't know if you can really see it. I always saw it as the coming of the eye. But yeah. That means that then this will be future incarnations of the Earth, the following ones. So, yeah. Do you have any more questions? I don't know if I can answer them, but I can try. Is there anything in particular you would like me to, to uh, yeah, to show? Is it possible to see the boiler house when you go out again? Which one? The boiler house. Right, you mean the, uh, for the heating? Yeah. Yes, of course. We can go outside and do the tour of the Catanum, do around the Catanum and look at the buildings uh, that belong to it. Mm -hmm. When you. So, yeah. When you showed the pillars, were you moving counterclockwise to tell? Uh, uh -huh. So th this this is where we came in. Uh, this is the west. So right. So I, we're going from west to east. Uh -huh. Right. And now I will be looking towards the east. And this is the obviously the stage. Very modern. I mean, this whole thing was was rebuilt. I mean, the um, the ceiling was painted again, and the. The columns made in this way in the 90s, they had to change it because it was made with asbestos. The ceiling was made with asbestos and they had to, they had to, uh, and they did that. And um, it took quite a while and they were all working together. Apparently here, the, the sculptures were working, the, the people painting the ceiling as well. And um, yeah, I've talked to a man that was here um, in contact with all the artists and there's su such fantastic stories um, from this project but this is actually quite yes fairly recent it's of course inspired in the first good channel but it's not quite the same
still it's a very unique it's a very unique place I, I, i've never been to a theater that it's that looks anything like this or that feels anything like this the colors from the stained glass windows are, are actually it, it's a bit of an experience to be in here i don't know really how to to describe it How when one could spend hours just looking at the, the windows. Aren't those windows very thick? Isn't there? A I wouldn't know how thick they are. Mm -hmm. The process no. that, the, the process, how they were made. Because the, they're, they're kind of etched. Right. Yeah. Might be. It might be. I, the only thing I know is they different. They use different form, different uh, metals to get the different different colors, right? I know that red is is made with gold, for example. So the red window that we saw in the beginning. Should we go to the statue, or is there anything else you would like to look at? I can make the light, light a bit stronger, actually. Mm -hmm. pull. Okay. Maybe, I don't know if Nicholas said it while I was away, but um, maybe just so you know that originally, um, in the original plans of the second Getianum, this Getianum, um, it was not thought of that it would be painted the ceiling of the great hall, nor that the um, columns would have the the shapes. You mean for the second Getianum? For the second Getianum, right. exactly. No, so, so these are actually elements that were within the first Getianum. Um, that much later, I think it was in the eighties, nineties, nineties. Um, were brought in by um, by the leadership, the, the 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 leadership here at the Gutierrez and, and the Executive Council, with a group of artists that are actually many of them still here, and of course this shows you the intricacy of the place. You know, actually there are people who know a lot about these images, and not only the images, but how how it was painted, how how everything was planned. We live here, but we don't know that, that, that much of it. But you can actually, if you come to the good, and if you come to Dornach, you can actually meet there. And it's really a wonderful experience to to hear how they how they did the, all this work and and where the impulse came from. And yeah, so in a way, here is like having a little bit of the first Gutiérrez inside the second Gutiérrez. How old is the pipe organ, Andrea? I don't know, actually. I don't know that either. I think it would be wonderful if someone can collect the, the questions in the chat, because then we can find all the information and send it out to you. I think this would be great. I don't know if I can ask a volunteer to, to do that. It doesn't, look, it doesn't look very big, but actually you can sit a thousand people here. I find it interesting that even the seating has the rounded edges on it. That's kind of interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's every little detail. And of course, maybe I can show you even more details like the, I hope you can see it. See, this is the, the wood leading to the to the stage is hand carved of course and the stairs also did you mention the acoustics yes the, the acoustics are actually quite um, they are not that great uh, a lot of people actually, especially when, when, when orchestras come to play, it, it's a challenge for them. I don't know if you can hear the echo, but there are certain places where you hear better than, than others. And actually one thing that, that well, that's what they say. I mean, I, I'm not a musician, so I cannot really, but 
judge, but but it is so that I think the acoustics can be challenging for for some. Um, um, but um, maybe something else to mention that at one point, at some point. Uh, I think it was mid twentieth century. This was the largest theater in 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 Europe. Um, so yeah, this is also very special to think that yeah that the Gatianum was in a way this reference or or this yeah at a, as as a theatrical institution one of the most prominent theaters in the in the European region. And of course, the only place where the two part production of Faust was was performed, we should go down the south entrance to take them. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit strange to see it not so empty. Um, I mean, today is a Saturday. So normally we would have a performance around this time. You would have um, rehearsals going on or a performance about to get started around 7, 7.30. Now so we are one actually, of the things, so if you imagine that we enter through the west. Mm -hmm. One of the things, because I think Nayalima is helping us because I'm in the car. So she's put one of the questions in there. I know we have one book in the chat. The other one we might want to add, so we don't forget, is the book on the Gutianum's windows. I, what was the name of the book, Andrea? It's the Gutianum windows. Okay, good. We just add that, and, and I will send it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're now going to get out, get uh, use the south doors. Here, another example of the details. You see the, the door handle. Uh, yeah. You have the. I have the key. Yes. Exactly. So now, so if we enter through the west, now we're going to leave through the south. Now it's a lovely sunny day. <laughs> that is just an, a magnificent day. I mean, we are blessed to have this and the the weather as well. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Yes, we should go out after the the representative of humanity. We can go out and go around the Oh, shine eye. Yeah. Okay, and I also wanted to do the balcony. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are on the second floor. Although we can see here. Oh yeah. Right. So you can hear, see. Yeah, the staircase, are, it's painted on uh, yeah, it's a rainbow. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, there it is. Oops, ah, that's the painting. This is the real tour guy. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. We have the Wait. United States. Oh. Yes, we're well, giving them a little tour. Good. Thank you. So then, this is work in action. Nico. Yes. So here's Esther Gester. And uh, she's, uh, she actually painted, we, we were just in the Great Hall, and you, you, you painted the, great, the ceiling. <laughs> Yes, we, we just talked about it, yeah. And you see this staircase, we also made four people together in 2005. And it was like this. So some have seen it 
coming from all the rainbow colors into the darkened canal, but again, because there's no window here. So it's the narrowest and darkest point in the staircase. <laughs> but then we had to take it off. And now we have decided to put it again because people who had seen it had missed it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it will be interesting when you do this experience yourself and you walk through what you experience here. Yeah. It's not like falling into a hole, but it's like finally you can let go, a break, and then it's going on again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just what happening nothing. now. Well, That's amazing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that really is amazing. Thank you, Esther. Maybe we see you at the, on the way back. Yes, Maybe. she's really working here. Yes. Yes. Right, so here we have the view from the Gertianum looking south. Maybe you can show them the Schreinerei. And the workshop, the Schreinerei, is back there. We will be there, yeah. And this is exactly here, behind this building, is where Steiner spent the last uh, time of his life, where he passed away. Yes, we will be there in a minute. About those are are those residences or are those part of the yeah. Gertianum? They are both. So they they belong to the Gertianum, but they are residences and they are they rent them out. So right here we have a model of the first Gertianum. Still have some battery. This is the glass house, which you will see in a minute as well. Um, today, it still stands. This was also built during the, at the same time as the first Gotanum was being built. Um, and it is here where they made the, the glass windows for the, for the first Gotanum. This is why it's called the glass house. And you can see, well, here is just the model. We will see it later, right? Mm -hmm. But here you can see the, the mold for the for the glasses. They would just make them on this huge, uh, what would you call them? I don't know. Yes, we will see them in. The heating, the heating house? Right, this is the heating house, which you will also see in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. And actually underneath it, there's the whole heating boiling yeah. system of the entire Goetheanum campus. So actually it's not only for the Goetheanum, but it also heats some of the houses that uh, belong to the campus and uh, the co-workers. This is the uh, house tool deck. This is the, the house tool deck we saw. House that you saw at the beginning, so the one that is in front of the West End, uh, West End. But they will see this in live, yeah. so let's, let's go okay. in. Okay. I think maybe maybe we just give it a moment of silence when we go mm -hmm. in. Another one. I think it's over there, yeah. Is that part of a broken window? Yes. Is it from the original Gertiana, maybe? Yes. 
You don't find them. Must be here. Sorry, I want one minute. Uh, I think. Two years. Yes, that's it. Okay. Remind it how tall that is, please. I'll give you a sense of it. <laughs> I think it's over nine. Oh, holy. It's over nine wow. meters. <laughs> Maybe, um, yeah, <laughs> should we, would you, should we get closer or would you like us to hold the image a little bit longer? I wonder if you, if, if it might be possible to increase the focus by tapping your screen. I doubt it. I, I think know. if we, I think if we were in another application, it would be, but because it's Zoom. Of course. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it, that, that's, the, that's the limitation because. So they can't, you can't see any details then, I guess. Can you put it, how are they, how are they looking? Like this, they've seen this, but we cannot see it. We cannot see it in big no. <laughs> because it's Zoom. So I don't even know how you, yeah. Yeah, we don't even know how you experience it. That, that's the difficulty that we don't know how many details we can show you, but maybe we just go a little bit closer. So this space, Andrea, what is this space here used for? Yes. So this is just the, the, the home of the representative of humanities, the exhibition room. And actually, so you, you see it here, there is kind of this space that has been built just just for contemplation, for actually being with the statue, um, is in fact, I, I believe that this space was um, made for containing the statue. So the, 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 the stage is next to it, right, Nicholas? This, this is extremely heavy to bring it here, was quite difficult. This was, I mean, originally, Stana was working on this. And the idea was, huh? I told you. Yeah. Oh, you said that yeah. already. Yeah. Um, but this is this is exactly the the this was part of backstage, the, this this kind of art here. It was a part of the of behind the stage, and then they were able not to behind the stage, but it was at the, next to the stage. It was in the stage, but at the at the back, right? So it was. If you would have looked at the stage, you would have seen this. No, no, what I mean is this room that we're in, this room was part of the stage, of the backstage. And then they that. closed it to, when, when they put the statue in. So I, to, I said before, maybe, maybe some people arrived a bit late, that the statue was actually meant to be at the, at the far back of the stage where lectures would be given or eurythmy would be performed. That was it. But but this this space, if I understood your question, Leanne, where where we are now, used to be a space within backstage, and it was used to put uh, the statue here because actually, 
when Steiner died, the, the statue was in this um, Shiner Eye um, workshop. Know, it workshop it's, it's like the, wor the workshop, the, the wood workshop, because he was still working on it as he was uh, dying. So this wasn't moved here um, uh, when Steiner was alive, but later also out of this fear that something could happen to it if there was a fire again in the Shrinerai, in the, in the wooden workshop, it was less protected than being within the concrete building. So that's how it ended up here. But a lot of people actually still raise the question of where, where should it go? Should it go on the stage? Should it be on the stage, yeah. Um, because of course, also the, mo the, the idea for, for, of the representative of humanity was to be on the stage of the first Goetheanum. But there was no indication as to whether it should be on the stage of the second Gettianum. So there are all these questions of, um, yeah, of, of where should this statue be? But for the time being, it has this kind of a bit of a, maybe a chrysalis, you know, a little cocoon where you can sort of enter and be with it. I think it's, it's quite a special space. You see, there is a window up there and, and maybe can I tell you something? Because the last time I was here, someone told me something amazing. And it's here, you see in front of it, there is this little room. And here there, is, there are dresses made by artists, uh, contemporary of Steiner, who like textile artists who asked, asked him, um, what would the, the dresses of, of the future humanity look like? And he gave indications, and these people saw it. Saw it? Is that how you say it? They, they saw these um, uh, very, very special dresses with these very special fabrics that would kind of resemble etheric bodies. And no one has, well, I haven't seen them for sure. Like they, they, they haven't been um, showcased yet. So there are all these little treasures that you can find in the Goetheanum, you know, that are kind of still waiting to be shown, I guess, or shared with, with the world. Yeah, so it's a temporary exhibition room, I would say. That's, that's what it is. And may, maybe, I don't know how, how well all of you know the statue. So I think maybe Nicholas, you could give well, a, a sense of it, but I think you should come closer so that. Is the quality of the image better from down here? Can you see a bit better now? Quite so, yeah. Great. Well, are there any questions about the, so is, well, I, I guess I could just say, just, oh, just a couple of things, just as indications. Um, and if you know the statue, well, this will be nothing new to you, but basically we have <clears throat> on the left side here, we have Ariman and Lucifer. This being, I don't know if you can see it, this would be Lucifer here, and this is Ariman. And they are, I don't, I don't know if you can, see that, but Ariman and Lucifer are, are somehow connected. Ariman's hand is connected to some part of Lucifer there. To his feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's one side of the, that, that's, that's the one side of the statue. And on the right side, we have the representative of humanity coming out. And separating, so to speak, Ariman, that's now here, the bottom, and Lucifer on the top, and the... I can go a bit closer. That's Lucifer falling. That's Lucifer falling on the right, here. So with his two arms, his left one up and his right hand down, 
um, he's creating a balance between these two forces of Ariman and Lucifer. And his right foot is actually stepping forward while his gaze is staring right into the to distance, you, yeah. into you, if you look from, from above, from the place where we entered. I'm here too. And a very special figure that many of you will know is this kind of winged element right at the top left. This is the humor. Well, or is it a question? It's a question. Some say it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's humor. <laughs> Some say it's humor. <clears throat> and Steiner actually made a um, uh, remark of so of course for for those of you that don't know it the statue is not finished he was still working on it it's marion when 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 he when he died um but what he really wanted to finish was ariman down here so this is the part of the statue that is most um worked yeah, or maybe, most maybe, finished maybe. yeah Yeah, it's it's quite um, quite impressive. It's quite impressive when you're here. It's very twisted, very twisted in in the literal sense of the the shapes. Everything is intricate twists and turns of the wood, and actually you can sense a lot of um, pain in the gestures. in the gestures of Ariman. And for me, this was always something very, very moving that when you come to a representative of humanity and especially this part, maybe you won't experience this when you come, but for me, it's always striking the sense of empathy one can develop for Ariman. This, this being that is in so much pain, um, which I, I think is, is quite, quite special that he really wanted this to be finished because this was what we had to understand the most in our time. Um, this being over here. To show you a bit more. Oops, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Yeah, we're gonna have to do another phone switch. Mine is charging. Okay, where is it? In the grocer side. To so go and get it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Just one more thing here. I also wanted to show the gesture of Lucifer here. Yeah. We have two Lucifers. We have Lucifer before the fall, and we have Lucifer in the falling. The gesture of Lucifer is quite remarkable as well. This kind of like winged being, this kind of like enclosed, this gesture of going inside and inward. It's quite beautiful as well. I hope that you can actually see it. Um, And of course, yes, the representative of humanity. The gesture really stays with you. And the statue is much bigger than you would expect. Huh? First time. And you also have the hands of the representative of humanity that are like this. <laughs> So if it's okay, we'll move on. What kind of wood is it carved? It's not one piece for sure. You can actually get 
in parts the the you can see you can see the points where the different wood is um, merged or stuck together and I don't think it's um, I don't think it's one one type of wood but a mix of woods but this is something we definitely can find out so thank you to the <laughs> question annotator maybe just I think you saw it at the beginning, but just to see that this is an original window, as you can see, it's broken after the fire from the first Gettianum. So the purple window from the first Gettianum is, is also here. Okay. Hmm? You have to get your phone. I notice as you go down the stairs, there's like different doors. Where do those doors lead? There's different, um, there's different rooms. This is, for example, a seminar room for meetings. This is the uh, section for uh, music and uh, speech. Stefan Hasler is the leader right now. And so there's different rooms, different functions there as well bathrooms and um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so this is the south side um, It is quite a big building, I would say. Should I go on? You think start? Look. Yes, please. Where is it? I go and get it. No, no, no. You get it? Yes. Okay. Good. The West. Huh. Okay. You see little footprints on the floor here and there. Do they have a significance or are they just hurtful? For the for the clothing. They're just uh, indications for for the COVID regulations, they had to make all the safety distance. And so basically for the stairs, you have to go. Oh, well, this is a little cafe here. Yeah. It's closed, as you can see. But uh, this would be full of people whenever there's a conference or, a, um, or an event. That's the reception and that's the door. That's where we came in from. Yes, let's go. I wanted to go, I wanted to do the balcony first. So you see the other buildings with the, Sure. With enough light.
Exactly. So this is the Grunsch, that means the, the, found, the foundation stone room or um, theater. Yeah. So this is the second theater. You don't have the, 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 the keys for it? Yeah. Oh, there we heard. It's a really smaller uh, theater and it's right under the one, uh, the main hall. And it's uh, much lower, but this for the first Cotanum was late actually. So we don't know whether the, it, the stone is still there or not, you know, because of the fire, I mean, but it would have been buried within this under the earth. In the earth, I mean. <laughs> You have to turn it on, no? Because yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments or whatever it might be, just please go ahead. Um, because it's not so easy to give a tour without actually seeing you guys. Uh -huh. We're gonna have to, I think, we're gonna have to take a, a little expression out. I don't know. No, no. No, you can't do that because it's closed again, but now we are looking inside. Ah. Okay, so sorry, at least I can show it in my office. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't expect it. Okay. 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 Yes, well, with all these new measures, the Gotanum is closed. Here. There you go. Cool. So now it's closed. Obviously, as you can see, usually it would still be open. But a few people. But... Yeah. So we're not now going to have to go to the, um, the offices and the... We didn't have to again. So this is the south again. And that is the Schreinerei. So this is the workshop where the Christmas uh, conference and the foundation of the of the society uh, took place. And of course, this was all in ruin. The first Gotanum was all in ruin. This it was only the foundations that remained. Oh, you don't have the, the key for this. Oh, that's a pity. Can you please turn your phone on? Okay, then let's go to the back.
only 1% battery, but Andrea is disconnecting, so. Maybe just um, just so you know that um, in a few minutes we'll probably have to begin to close this experience <laughs> um, because we we are now outside and un unable to to um, charge the phones again. But I think what I would like to ask you, Leanne, or, or ask me, Leanne, because Robin, I think you're in, in your car, is maybe to have the foundation stone meditation or verse ready so that you can maybe yeah, accompany Yeah, I have it Leanne. ready. Um, Andrea, just tell me when you, when you want me to. Perfect. Okay. Especially, especially if it comes here, we yeah, in the terrace, by the way. Especially if we, if it comes to the point that we we lose connections completely, and then we wouldn't be able to log in again and say goodbye to you. That at least one of you can help us sort of close this moment. That would be great, Leanne. I've still got the control for you when you yeah. did the co-host, Jimmy. So I've been letting, and as they came in. Okay. Yes, I can show you. That is Halde. This house Halde. Rudolf Steiner Halde. So much bigger than it used to be. But when they when Steiner first came here and there was there was just hills, there was this little house here. And this is where they used to stay in the beginning. <clears throat> and behind these trees, maybe you're beginning to see the glass house. That right. So that is the glass house, and uh, it is it is now where you can find the natural science section on the right cupola. That building of the right, the right. Uh, Just a second. So the right side of the building belongs to the natural science section, and the left side of the building belongs to the section for agriculture well you can see spring is in full bloom so actually yeah. the the trees are covered in the the two wings but like you can you can see the similarity with the first Gertiano exactly with these rounded rounded elements of course you see it black and that's the remaining of the burn of the burning What's the new construction, Andrea? Is it part of the no, they, they Unfortunately, the, the, um, the place was sold to, yeah. to um, how do you say it? Like, um, yeah, they are developing buildings, actually, modern buildings, uh, residential yeah, buildings. Yeah, and destroying a lot of the, the wildlife, the, wildlife the, the natural flora. And a lot of people here are upset because so, there was a promise that they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't do that because this could affect the, um, the diversity, the biodiversity yeah, of, of the, the get, of yeah. the gardens of the Getianum. So actually, the Getianum made a plea, along with other people, to make it possible to stop the the construction. But unfortunately, it went ahead nevertheless. And here behind these trees are also maybe is also the heating house. Yeah. yeah. So this is the north side of the building. Now. Yeah. Maybe just to show you the north side, you see there are less windows. Here. In fact, I think that that is um, where the representative of humanity is on this just just behind here. Behind here, at the behind. Okay. 
So Andrea, do you and Nicholas work in the core building or are you in one of the outer buildings? Yes. When you work? I am, uh, I am right. Down here is my office. We are on top of it now. It's a tiny little room. Okay. Um, and there are see, just, yeah, just to give you an idea that there are all these little rooms. So, the, so here, this is the heating building. I don't know what you call it really. The heating house. The heating house. And down there is the, if I like the, the... Yeah, this little house. See, here's the publication house. Of the Gutenberg publication. The publisher, the publishing house. Yes. Yeah. The philosophical and philosophical. There. So the heating house and the publishing house. And here, if you see, is the Studentenheim. So it's the house for students that come to, to study the anthroposophical studies or the Eurythmic studies. So that's a fun fact. That's where we met. <laughs> Nicholas and I. And we're so many people meet the anthroposophy and, and each other is very very special so robin to answer your question there are all these little rooms inside that are allocated to the different departments of the Gatanum school of spiritual science um yeah the you east flat, you can see the difference between the east side and the west the west side it's like a it's, it's really like a head if you think about it the the west side just looks quite a bit like a, like a face and this this behind here is like a the back the, the back of the head the back of the head yeah um and uh, aside from the 11 sections so the 11 departments of the school of spiritual science like the youth section is one and the pedagogical section the agricultural section and so on there are other departments like for example the the people that work in the magazine das Goetheanum, the magazine the the publishing house that, for example, is the, the home of the social sciences section. So they don't have a room within the Gitanum, but a, a building. And now Das Gitanum has moved there too. Um, and all these offices, actually, these windows uh, down here are the offices to the, the people that work in the stage. So the producers, the administration for the stage, the costume designers, Etc. And here, for example, on the right hand side, one of these windows, uh, actually on this other side, is the, the office for the membership of, um, of the Anthroposophical Society. So if you actually become a member of the society, it's very beautiful. Your card will be issued right from here, right from this side. And your name and all your details are archived manually still um, in these little cards, um, along with thousands of thousands of other people. And they still get updated manually. So if someone dies or if someone decides not to be a member anymore, this is still like hand stamped and archived in, in the drawers. It's stupid that you get a full impression of it, but this is the whole campus of the piano. Lots of buildings and little houses. Yeah. Connected to it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we take you back to the west entrance to to close the the process. And yeah, I mean, for us, it's it's very moving and, and kind of special to have you we, we didn't want to prepare information in this sense because i think the getanum is this kind of place that you really experience when the moment you step in and it's so difficult to make this uh, a reality you know through the camera so i don't i don't know how it comes across but i think before before any technical glitches start to appear and i just really want to encourage those of you who can consider it to come and um, all right Andrea, what you and nicholas have done has been absolutely amazing it's given us a glimmer in this time of covid when travel is restricted 
to see the, the awe and the wonder and the beauty that is tied to everything that Applied Anthroposophy has been sharing with us. So I so appreciate it. I, I think we, we would love to tell you that whenever you come, whenever you can make it, you, you, you have a home here with us. And we will take you to all the little corners properly and introduce you to all the wonderful people that work here. Because really, like, I cannot stress enough how this, is, this belongs to all of us, you know? And as actually that, that this place exists is, is, a, is made possible because individual free members choose to support it. And now it sounds, I sound like I'm making a propaganda for become a member of the Anthroposophical Society, but it's so special that a hundred years ago, a man thought that individual people could support a building like this, a historical building like, like this and everything that goes inside. You know, the research of, of spiritual science in service of the development of the human soul in modern times. And we, I, you know, I thank all of you who support it every day because really it's very, very special to have this, this place on earth and, and others like this. And really, if you can come sometime to, to visit it, I really, really encourage it. It's, it's, it's a home for those who are seeking and, and a, a place to meet one another. So thank you for <laughs> participating in this with us. Maybe here we are, <laughs> it's sunny. Maybe I turn around so you can see it once more from here. And maybe Leanne, if you, if you can, Okay, and, and I'm just going to do the yeah, last panel it. too because, because of time. Um, so, <clears throat> yes. At the turning of the time, the spirit light of the world entered the stream of earthly being. Darkness of night had held its sway. Day radiant light streamed into the souls of men. Light that gives warmth to simple shepherds' hearts. Light that enlightens the wise heads of kings. Light divine, Christ's son, warm thou our hearts, enlighten thou our heads, that good may become what we from our hearts would found, what we from our heads would direct in conscious willing. That's it. Thank you thank so you, much. Yeah, thank you, Andrea and Nicholas. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for being our leaders all this time. Yeah, thank you, friends. Thank you. My heart is filled with warmth and joy with that visual tour. It's awesome. Please, if you, if you could collect the questions, that would be wonderful so that we can find the information you, for you. And we will do this in this week. And um, I believe we have one more meeting next Thursday. We will try to be there, but in case we cannot make it because it's very, very early for us in the morning or late in the night, we want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful closure of this amazing journey of Applied Anthroposophy. It has been amazing to meet you all and to work with you. And we, we are gonna stay in touch for sure. <laughs> okay, thank you both. Bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Much, much love and gratitude to you both. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Bye. Working on it here. <laughs>